Hi, hi, hi. I'm Crazy Chris and welcome to So Cool Science. Science you can do right at home. I'm just checking out this lever and going over today's science file. And today's science file, it says, How can a spoon be a lever? Well, that's an awesome question. Try this. You will need two spoons and a pot. Okay, so you've probably seen this done, right? Where you saw someone take, you know, two regular size spoons and a regular coffee mug and then flip the spoon into the mug. I'm gonna make it way more wicked cool. No, because this is the So Cool Science Show. And as the old saying goes, anything you can do, I can do better. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna prove to you mine is better. You know why? Because mine's bigger. <laughs> okay, get yourself two of these big metal spoons and you're gonna line them up on the desk like this. Now, I'm not gonna be using some sissy little coffee mug, no way. Instead, I'm going full blast on this one because I'm gonna be using, that's right, cookware. A full-blown pot. Not only can it hold more coffee, it's great at upstaging people. Place your pot like this. And now you're gonna tap the outer spoon and watch. Uno, dos, tres. Whoa, now that's so wicked cool. Instant slow-mo replay. So, why does a spoon go into the pot? And what does this have to do with levers? Well, don't look at me. Take a closer look at this. A lever is a beam that rotates around a pivot point, or what's known as a fulcrum, which is used to reduce the amount of effort needed to lift a load. When the fulcrum is in the center of the beam, you have to exert the same amount of effort as the object weighs. However, when you move the fulcrum closer to the object, you reduce the amount of effort you need because the effort side would be moving faster than the load side of the lever if you applied the same amount of force and the lever would break. There are three types of levers. In a first class lever, the fulcrum is anywhere in between the effort and the load. The spoon is a good example of a first class lever because the fulcrum is in between the effort side and the load side. In a second class lever, the fulcrum is located on either end of the lever with the load in between the fulcrum and the effort. A good example of this would be your car door. The fulcrum is where the door is attached to the car. The door would be the load, and on the other side would be the effort. In a third class lever, it's the complete opposite of a second class lever, in that the effort is in between the load and the fulcrum, such as your arm lifting an object. Your elbow would be the fulcrum, your hand would be the load side, and the muscles attached to the bone are in between the fulcrum and the load. These are the three types or three classes of levers. So now you know more about levers. You know, flipping a big spoon into a pot is why science is so cool.